Hey, 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 welcome back to another complicated Prairie Sussa Ranch Farm vlog. I'm Aaron, and thank you for tuning in, my friends. Well, it wasn't the best week here at Prairie Sussa Ranch. It wasn't all unicorns, rainbows, and sunny days. When you have cattle, you sometimes have bad weeks and bad days. <clears throat> I had a real bad day here. We lost a very productive member of our cattle herd due to a freak scenario. I'm going to touch base how we found our cow dead in a controlled environment. I will share what cow, what member of the cow herd it was, what happened, and what we're going to do to rectify it. <laughs> That's going to lead into our next quick uh, subject. We're going to talk about cattle mortality rates and in the cattle industry as a cattle producer or livestock producer for that matter. So we're going to touch base as to the mortality rates that uh, you can expect. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you mentally approach this, how you ment mentally prepare yourself for these types of scenarios. Because it's tough. It will get to you. It will bother you. It will play tricks on your head and it'll make you feel like you did your job incorrectly which that's what it did to me the other day i was very upset let's just say i didn't sleep too much that first night when you lose a cow or a calf that's tough that's a tough pill to swallow but we figured it out so i'm going to share with you what happened there uh april had some uh, whoopsies so she had a panic moment i'm going to share that with you because it was funny it was real funny i liked it <laughs> And we got a few other things to do in between there. So anyways, that's enough chit chat here. Let's pit her, pat her, and get at her. Woo! Well, it's probably close to the, uh, I don't know, probably minus 28 right now, something like that. It was about minus 34 this morning. But uh, we're gonna take a couple bales. I'm taking one of those barley bales to break up for the main herd, the main cow herd. I'm taking them a, a slew bale see what's left in their feeders but uh, tomorrow it's gonna really get nice and warm it's supposed to go from well, was minus 34 to this morning uh, should go to about uh, minus 2 by tomorrow morning so it's a big fluctuation it's tough on the animals though you know yeah it's great it's gonna warm up but these temperature drops and spikes and everything I don't know it's tough on it's tough on the animals I especially get concerned for the uh, younger ones the young cows and cows so if you like Prairie Sessor Ranch Farm videos, make sure you support our small YouTube channel by hammering that thumbs up and hammering that subscribe button. I'll give you a second. Ding, thumbs are up. Ding, subscribe is hit. Bing, ding, ding, ding. Thank you very kindly. Let's get out the show. All right, we got the barley bale twine pulled off. Now we're just gonna break it up and we'll go take a look. I'll show you what it turned out like. see what uh well, how much grains in there you might be surprised i was when i took a look there uh, the other day oh this is that little piece look at this so just took a random there's green there is greens in all these are all full they're all full aren't just shells so it's gonna fatten them up good but look what fell out so watch it lady watch it lady look at that unbelievable eh look at that those are all full lots of good feed in this in this uh, barley look that's why I gotta come with the bucket. Clear it so it's hard, and then that way they'll be able to get down. Once it's like, it'll rock, it'll turn rock hard, then they'll get all those grains. Right now I'm wasting too much in the soft snow. 
Uh, that's why I've been feeding a little bit in the feeders on uh, poor hay and they've been cleaning right up. So this gives you an idea what the, but yeah, look at this. A lot of feed value in this uh, in these these barley bales. Another month of this, they'll they'll be fattened up. Pretty good. You know that barley was a blessing because of the poor hay they've been getting. At least we can guarantee that they're getting some some grains, and it's important this year. That says it all. This is the first calf that I've lost in many years. Now this guy, we gotta figure out what the heck happened here. It's a big steer. Horrible. No, that's the sad reality to to the cow ranching. Anything with livestock. When you have livestock, you'll have dead stock. These are our money makers. This is all we make money on. When you lose one, it's a big loss. You can't help but feel responsible. It's horrible. Seriously, it's really upsetting for me to sit here. I almost don't even want to videotape this. It's just really upsetting. Uh, I got to figure out what happened. We had no ailments. We just went over everything. Everything was fine. So, what can I guy do? You know, looking at the rest of them. As soon as I saw this, I went through the rest of them. Everything looks good. So, well, I don't care who you are. You do get these cases once in a while. And my first thing is to look over everything here. You know, they're getting good hay. You know, they've been getting a little bit of alfalfa. You know, he could have bloated on a little bit of alf too much alfalfa. Oh. For any of you people out there that raise livestock, how do you deal with it? I take it pretty personally, you know, feels like I'm doing my job wrong when I lose an animal. We lost a big steer. We lost our nicest steer of the whole group. I had the number written down. It was probably up in the 800 pound range and I lost him. It's super disappointing. It's super saddening. Uh, however, when you have livestock, you are gonna have dead stock. Now, anytime you lose one of these young guys, we have it lost in this calf lot, in our calf lot here. I, I don't know if I've lost one in the last six years. I've been very lucky. And I'm not talking about the newborn, you know, during calving season, you're gonna lose a calf or two or a few. Just depends, it's all luck. A lot of it is luck. As you know, calves, are a livestock or a cow producer's money. This is all my money. That's how we survive. Now, when you lose one of these, two of these uh, fine animals, you take it personal. Number one, your, your pocket book, book takes a hit. Number two, mentally you take a hit. You feel like you did something wrong. When you lose one of those, it, it plays games with you for sure. Now, I'm gonna show you the problem right here. See this? See that garbage? Yeah, I made those ruts. I'm gonna tell you how these ruts played a role in me losing one of these guys. Lesson learned, Darren, lesson learned. Now I'm gonna show you in a quick clip what I did. What I did that probably was a chain reaction 
to start my issue here. This is what I did. Here, quick clip, I'll play it for you, and then I'll explain a little bit after. So this is the area I gotta work on here before the calves come back here in a few days. It's just too deep, the snow is too deep, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back, try to back plate it. problem I'm having. Look, look back there. It's almost up to my axles. So, for us to bring calves in here, I don't know. I learned this lesson the very hard way. And I'm going to tell you what my father told me. <laughs> Two weeks ago, okay? That's funny, you never stop learning. You never stop learning, people. Listen. To those veteran, those senior cattlemen, those people that have lived and worked with livestock their whole lives, listen to what they have to say. Even the smallest, most minute little detail. Take that information and, and put it up in your brain. Because I did it this time and I paid the price this year. I went in briefly, back bladed, made all these bloody ruts. Right? I went and I hardened it up with a snowmobile after I realized all I'm doing is running it up. Uh, my father told me, hey, don't go in there. He said, you're just going to have to take a snowmobile. He said, just go with the snowmobile. He said, the cold's coming and it'll make it rock hard, which it is. It's rock hard now. Wherever I went with the snowmobile is rock hard. But against my better judgment, I went in here and I rutted it up. Now, Aaron, so what big deal? He made some ruts. Okay, these guys, these guys are very unpredictable. You see this rut right here? You see this rut right here? This is where my calf was. Under here, there's a tire tread mark. And after I made the rut, when I brought them in here, I thought I was going to be smart. And I was going to fill up the rut with old hay. So I had some old marshy hay and I filled in the ruts it's, you know it seems you know easy enough simple enough doesn't seem harmful anyway right well listen up so those are both steers the calf that died probably bigger than those both of those 800 pounds it's my biggest steer in here it's always the nicest animal you lose I came in and I fed them up some nice hay they're eating good. They're not, not eating anything too hot. This is more of a grassy bale. There's a little bit of alfalfa in that bale. Not fully. So they got a good mixture of hay here. But he's a big eater. He sat at that feeder and he ate. He probably went and ate some of that alfalfa. There's alfalfa mixed in here. It's kind of a mixed bale. That's why I gave it to them because it's not straight up alfalfa. There's grasses. There's a little bit of everything in here. That big heavyweight came and sat down where I threw that fresh bedding and he got in that rut. He got in that rut, he expanded, and he could not get up. Now this happened at night because I was in here fairly late and then I checked them. I checked them every night, every morning and midday. Typically three times a day I'll keep on the, an eye on the... I want to know what's going on in here. You got to keep an eye. This is... You gotta keep these guys healthy. You gotta keep them happy. You gotta keep them tame. You gotta make sure you're doing your job properly, which I thought I was. Well, heavyweight gets stuck in that rut. He tries to get up and he can't. I find him legs extended up, bloated. Now, no other calves were bloated. Nothing else bloated here. I did a full walk around. I thought on this good and hard. And dad mentioned, he said, well, did you cover those ruts up? Maybe they didn't see it. Hmm, light goes on. Yeah, I did. I did cover, he said, well, was the rut where I was laying? I said, well, yeah. He said, you got your, your issue. You fed them up, good. 
which isn't the problem. Problem is ruts. So all you livestock people, don't go rut up your, <laughs> your corral. So what I'm gonna do with this is wait for more fresh snow and I'm gonna have to fill in with snow. Not, not hay, not straw, nothing. Cause I do not want any one of their animals laying in one of these ruts. You could see how they could get stuck on their side easily. So this is a write off for me until it snows. I'm gonna leave it as is. And let this be a lesson to don't learn the hard way like I learned. Keep your corrals nice and level. If you can, do, do the best you can. Not everyone's gonna have a perfectly flat corral. Your corral areas get eroded and this and that. But try to keep those deep ridges out if you can. Uh, you know, I lost myself my nicest animal. There's a one pay check out of my pocket. Hopefully it's the last one. What can I say? Let me know in the comment box below. Well, have you had any kind of weird problems or issues like this in the past or present? How did you solve it? What was your solution? You know, <clears throat> it's always interesting hearing from you guys and girls. And you know, everyone's scenario is different, but this is quite upsetting. The reason I know better than this is because I have sheep and lambs. And this is a no-go for sheep. We would never do this because that is what will happen. They will cast. Castings when they get stuck on their side or back, especially the more wool they have. And, and this happens, this is exactly what happened. Uh, essentially, it was just in a different scenario. And it doesn't happen as often with these maniacs. So I should have known better. It's just, you, you gotta always think worst case scenario and plan for worst case scenario all the time with livestock. Then you'll be okay. I'm generally pretty cautious. But I, I definitely, I pooped the bed this time. I know as a fact, it's not an ailment. There's no disease issues. Biggest, best, fattest calf, of course. That's just how it goes. Usually it's the best cow, best calf that goes first. But anyways, let's get on with the show here. It's not belly aching. So when you're raising animals such as beef cattle, um, you're gonna expect some mortality rates. You're gonna have some livestock lost. You're gonna have cattle die on you. This is inevitable. You cannot <clears throat> bypass it. It's not the producer's fault. Sometimes it is, but there is a certain percentage that will be lost. Typically, uh, the majority are lost. are gonna be in the first uh, two, three weeks of life. Animals will generally, calves in particular, will pass away due to scours. Scours is the number one killer. Number two, you're probably looking at respiratory issues in cattle. Number three would be predator, and then others will be unknown, other ailments, etc., and so forth. As, as they get older, your percentage of mortality goes down. Now, if you think about it, <clears throat> a cow can live anywhere from, you know, 15 to 20, maybe 20 plus years, um, still produce. <laughs> it's getting pretty up there, but you know, they, they do. They live a fairly decent uh, length of time. They're fairly healthy animals. If you are a producer, if you're a cattle producer, livestock producer, and you use an animal, do not take it too personal. Learn from the mistakes, learn from your mistakes, uh, learn from seniors or veterans or somebody already in the industry and, and listen to what they have to say because there's lots of tips flying around. There's tips that I get on a weekly, daily basis from whether it's my father or other producers. At first I said, oh no, no, no. I'm not gonna lose any calves. If calving sees, I'm gonna be on it. I don't care how much you're on it. For us, calving time, you can expect out here, maybe an average of 5% to 10% calves lost come calving time. And I'm speaking through the fact or due to the fact that we do calve out in in winter, it's cold. Lots of the time we're calving out is minus 25 Celsius to minus 45 Celsius. So that's challenging. You gotta catch them, you gotta be on the ball. You're still gonna lose some cattle. You're gonna lose some calves. I don't care how good you are. I don't care if you got a horseshoe inserted way up there, up your behind, you're still gonna lose some calves. <laughs> Maybe not lots, but problems occur. And anyways, I just, the point, the full point of this little speech was if you are a young producer, 
senior producer, my age, you're in the you're you're a cattle in the cattle industry. Don't take it to heart. Learn from your mistakes. Uh, learn from the scenario. Adjust accordingly. And sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. Sometimes you just gotta walk away and know you did your best because shit happens. Stuff happens sometimes that um, that sucks. Worst part. Worst part part of livestock is dealing with dead stock. Personally, that's the part I hate most about it. I do not enjoy dealing with it. You know, like yesterday, I was pretty upset. I took it literally like I did something wrong, but nothing I did wrong. You can't help it. What can you do? But let's get on with it. Well, here's the text message I just got. Come out to the other yard now, 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 now from April. What could possibly be wrong? <laughs> so here's April. Let her describe what just happened here. April, you sent me a panicked, uh, should I be standing by you with a hammer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you mean sent you a pa I sent you a panic text that said, hey, get here now. And you say, why? What's up? Now, 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 now. No, first he said, <laughs> why? What's up? When you get a message saying, get here now, don't ask why. Just get there. April, I can't help but see you made a mess for us. Oh, I made a mess. Oh, you want a hand? Yeah. <laughs> we moved all the grain into the silo, but guess what he forgot to do? Own up to it. Communication breakdown. <laughs> he didn't put the partition in to stop the grain from coming out. So I opened the door thinking, okay, there's just a little bit of grain here. I'm gonna grab some for the horses and the sheep. What do I behold? Everything comes spilling oh, out. Hey, April, don't you know you don't open it up when there's no partition in it? That was across <laughs> the other side and there was not to be more <laughs> grain in here. Well, I guess I shit the bed here. I, uh, when we carried uh, or put in, cleaned out that uh, grain bin, we forgot to put that in. So this is a problem. Not we. <laughs> so how are you gonna solve this? I don't know, I shut it. You couldn't shut it, Mr. Muscles. Your wife had to shut it. I guess I'm gonna have to just- uh... You need the hammer, I was just trying to help. <clears throat> oh man, that's funny. All right, well, I'm gonna have to- Not today, but- Not okay. today. I'll have to get the bucket on the tractor and just put it underneath. Even true professionals mess up now and then. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> when I cleaned out or I uh, <laughs> emptied that one gravity wagon that we put alfalfa pellets in, we put it into this bin and we put it through the side. We didn't do it, put it through the middle. Uh, we didn't put it through the top, we went through the side. And I just forgot to put that, that wall in. So now when you open the door, <laughs> it's, uh, it's coming out pretty hot and heavy. So I'm gonna have to go there. <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll probably just get, uh, oh man. I'll just have to get a mini bag and uh, I guess do it manually or put it in a truck, tractor bucket or something, figure something out. But I gotta get that open because we're gonna be feeding that up, the oats in there, to the uh, the cows, to the, the adult, adult cows. We always give the sheep a little bit, so we gotta make sure it's accessible. But yeah, that's pretty funny. I just didn't think of that. I don't know what, what the heck. I guess I wasn't thinking. I was gonna say, what am I thinking? I guess I wasn't. <laughs> well, much like this frigid weather, hopefully it's done. <laughs> this is Aaron throwing in the towel. I will see you next weekend with an all new Prairie Sense at Ranch Farm vlog. Be there or be square, my friends. Have yourself a fantastic week. Hopefully we can get those calves into that alley so we can give them some of those sweet, sweet alfalfa pellets. Bye for now, have a good one. Oh.